This is Hard Reset, a series about rebuilding our world from scratch. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Go. <laughs> so, Nick, last time we were here, we were doing the Hard Reset podcast, and we started playing around with the idea of rolling up Hard Reset episodes in order to create a mega episode right. where we were really rebuilding the world from scratch and taking all of these different ideas and putting it into sort of one giant episode. And Not an episode. It's a megasode. Well, yeah, we're actually doing it. Tell me, what is the megasode? Yeah, so this was sort of always part of the secret plan of Hard Reset was we always liked the idea that, oh, we're talking about all these disparate technologies, but how do they come together and sort of Voltron into a real social change at the fundamental level? And that's what this episode is all about. It's all about farming and how will all these different technologies change the way that we farm in the future. And so because we've done so many great episodes about vertical farming, or mushroom leather, and robots that harvest soft fruits like strawberries, what will that make the farm of the future look like? And we finally get to answer that question. So it's been a lot of fun putting all those episodes together and bringing in new reporting and new ideas to combine it into something special. So what is one of the new ideas that we brought into this? Because these are all episodes we've done before, but we, we are adding in some new elements and mm -hmm. there was a new perspective that you brought into this. Can you tell me a little bit about that? So for this, what we're using is a framing device of how much land it actually takes to provide every person on Earth with all the food they eat, all the clothing they wear, all the other materials in our daily lives that we rely on farming to provide. It averages out to about a half an acre per person. There's about 4 billion acres of active cropland in the world, and there's about 8 billion people. So that averages out to roughly half an acre per person of active cropland. That half acre of land has to provide you with all the food you eat, all the clothes you wear, all the fuel, fiber, and medicines that we rely on agriculture to provide. That's not a lot of room, but we actually do that all the time. We do that every day already, and that's kind of amazing. So with this Megasode, we're exploring how are we gonna get the most out of that area of land, and can we actually use even less? Can we use robotics and vertical farming and biotech to be even more efficient and potentially return some of that land to nature? One of the things that's interesting about this concept is it, we just don't stick with things that are growing in the field per se. We're also talking about some of the applications of mm -hmm. it as well. And I think when we think about a hard reset for farming, you would think you would stay in the vertical farm or the robot farm or like the laser weeding space. But two of the episodes we ended up talking about and including in this are, are the episode on dinner and mm -hmm. then the episode uh, that we did with every table. Right. Why did you think it was important to include those two episodes as well? I think the way we consume food is a huge part of how we grow food. Farmers are making food in response to market demands and market signals. So when there's a huge demand for things like beef, then there will be a lot of people producing beef. By making subtle changes in our diet, we could have a huge impact on how we use land in this country. What a lot of people don't realize is that 75% of the cropland in the United States is just growing food for livestock, not for humans. It's just feed. And so by making a change in how much meat we eat, we could free up vast amounts of land to be used for other purposes or to, to regenerate and grow more topsoil. Right. The other thing that we included in this that, you know, sometimes gets left out of the farming e equation was uh, the episode on mycelium. You know, the clothes that we wear, those are all also byproducts, some mm -hmm. of them, um, much of it, of farming. Yeah, industry. absolutely. I mean, cotton is a, is a crop that we grow. Right. Um, there's any number of other fibers that we grow, like hemp, et cetera. Uh, a fair amount of cloth uh, that we wear is, you know, petroleum products or things like that, but still natural grown fibers are a huge part of the clothing we rely on. And um, more and more people are starting to look at mushroom leather as an alternative uh, source of textiles. Because frankly, you can't just make more leather. It's so dependent in lockstep with the beef and cattle industry. You know, if there's a huge decrease in the demand for beef, and therefore a huge reduction in, in the size of the beef and cattle market, then there will be less leather around. Right. And frankly, it would probably be a good thing for the environment <laughs> if there was less demand for beef and cattle. Right. And I kind of hope that happens. But so what will that mean for people who make fine leather goods? Right. What will that mean for people who are buying leather coats or upholstering their chairs? There are great alternatives for leather out there, not just the pleather plastic stuff, but you can actually grow 
really great leather alternatives out of mushrooms. Mycoworks is a company that's doing really interesting things in this space and making really, really amazingly beautiful products out of mushrooms. What has been your favorite part about revisiting these things and actually doing that sort of the conceit of the show intentionally mm -hmm. in one product? You know, we've done so many shows that touch on how we make or consume food. And I don't think that was originally something we thought would be such a big topic right. when we were thinking about Hard Reset. And so going back and revisiting all of these different episodes has been a lot of fun because food is very fundamental to our existence as humans. And it's really fundamental to our civilization. And digging into these ideas again has been a lot of fun. And it's been really fun going back through all the interviews that we did with such a diverse array of subjects and finding, you know, sound bites and insights that we just didn't have time to include in the original episodes. You know, one of the things that I think sometimes gets lost in the process of making these, these episodes and when we present them to our audience, they're just like really nice, neat packages is just how much is left on the cutting room floor. Right. And so it's cool to be able to present information to the audience in a new way, repackaged and be able to resurface those types of things, but also force these connections to sort of be more apparent than uh, they typically have been. I'm curious when you uh, have not gone through this process, what other megasodes are, are springing to mind for you, just like, oh, we have this, these small pieces over here. It'd be nice to sort of add a couple more pieces to mm -hmm. it and do another hard reset megasode. Yeah. I, I'm really excited about the prospect of doing a megasode on energy, how we produce it, how we store it, how we use it. I think it would be great to do a hard reset on how we build cities and how we build homes and architecture, because we've talked a lot about those subjects. And I think that's really important. I think there's so many aspects to our world that we now have the opportunity to rethink from the ground up. So the sky really is the limit.